Yeah, um, that fight went. Um, I don't. I want to. Don't want to say exactly like I thought it would, but uh, I always said, look, Horiguchi has to take him to the ground because this kid is a very good puncher, very strong puncher, and we knew that going into the fight. Dan knew it. Mike Brown from AT. Everybody knew it. So they they were going to uh, try to avoid the big punch. And eventually take him down and then submit him. That was the game plan from the very beginning. Uh, but as you know, uh, in the first round, he got dropped really hard with a strong left hand. And I think that's partly due to um, the you know the fighter, the opponent was in a southpaw position and not the right hand position. So I think it threw him off a little bit. Uh, but the kid has good timing. He moves well. He's a good counter puncher. And he caught Horiguchi, and but Horiguchi got up, didn't seem to be faced. And uh, then in the second round, you know, when he took him down, I could tell that uh, it was going to be a you know a short time after that that he would win. Uh, I knew the game plan was they have to close the gap and shoot, take this kid down. And they were they told me from the very beginning that they were going to try to go for the submission. And that's what their game plan was. So I'm not surprised that he didn't kick more, strike more. Uh, if you think about the arsenal and the weapons that Horiguchi has, uh, he's well-rounded. He could strike, he could kick, he could punch, he could take down, he could submit. He has a complete game. Uh, and, and what I would say about the other kid is if, if he really wants to be an MMA fighter and not just a puncher, then he could be very good too. But uh, he has to work on his ground game, his wrestling. There's a lot of things in MMA, not just punching. Well, I would tell uh, Horiguchi what I told Dan Lambert. I said, look, this is not something that's done. This is something that we'll consider. Um, but there's no 125-pound weight class uh, in men's division for Bellator fighters. Uh, we would like to accommodate uh, Horiguchi, but... Uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, how this all works out. Um, and saying that, you know, we'll do our best to put him in some big fights, fights that make sense, uh, and let, let him redeem himself maybe in some of the losses that he ha he's had in the past. Um, and um, and then we'll take it from there. But, you know, I think it's, uh, I urge everybody just to take one step at a time in this matter. It's, it's possible, but um, then we have to start a whole division and uh, and I know, you know, it wasn't until I talked to Dan about, I would say three months ago, he said, look, he can make 25. And so I didn't even know that was a consideration at the time. Now that I know it's a consideration, we'll have to see if, you know, it's something that we as a company want to head in that direction. No, like I said, that uh, we're not committed to that division yet. But it's something we will uh, take into consideration. But like I said before, I wouldn't move so quickly to uh, to head into that direction because as a company, we have to make a decision. Okay, now we're gonna have to start signing fighters, you know, and uh, maybe have a 15, 20 person roster. We're gonna hire all new fighters. And uh, are we gonna do that uh, right now? I'm not sure. It's a possibility, that's all. That's easy because, listen, I tried to sign Horiguchi before he went to the UFC and I, or while he was at the UFC, I tried to sign him before he went to Ryzen. And, um, you know, we're in the business of signing the best fighters in the world. And he definitely is one of the best fighters in the world. And so to me, you know, I've been uh, looking forward to working with Horiguchi for so many years. Uh, and we're all, we've been very friendly because he trained uh, at AKA, trained at Dan's place before. And so he, you know, we've always had a good relationship and uh, it's been great. But the mission statement here for the company really is to sign the best fighters in the world that we can. And Horiguchi was one of the top uh, prospects I wanted to go after when I knew we were going to fight, start the fighting the 135 pound weight class. Uh, so I knew he'd be a great addition to the tournament. Uh, it didn't work out for him. But that doesn't mean he's still not, you know, an elite fighter and one of the best in the world. Um, I think the first thing we have to iron out is what weight class he's going to fight at. And uh, so we'll have to figure that piece out. But um, 
you know, like our other big star fighters, we are going to put him in some very interesting, challenging matches to test his martial arts skills. And uh, that's the business that we're in. So uh, we're going to look for some uh, of the biggest, highest profile fighters that we can fight with him and uh, and see how uh, how he does. We have we have a list of fighters that we're looking at, uh, but as a company, we have to make a decision on what we're going to do, whether we can put them in super fights like these single matches or are we going to actually have a whole division? That's the question. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we'll have to figure it out. That's the part that we're going to figure out. But, you know, when you talk about Horiguchi, I want people to remember this is that he was winning that fight against Pettis mm -hmm. until he got stopped by the spinning back fist. Mm -hmm. You know, so he got he got caught. You know, people in this sport get caught all the time. Doesn't matter how great you are. Doesn't matter how you know, like uh, what an amazing athlete you are. People people get hit in this business, and then the fight's finished. But he was this close to winning that fight and being our current champion. So I think he could still compete at 35. Would he like to go 25? Uh, that's something that we're debating internally. Oh no! I I listen. I I I like the kid. I mean, he's always smiling. He oh, he's always happy. I've never seen him not be in a good mood. And he's been a he's been a pleasure to work with. And Dan's been a pleasure to work with too. So my my experience with Horiguchi as a fighter has been you know uh, good. And it's for him maybe it didn't work out like I said. But my interactions with him have been positive. I text him when he was uh, fighting in Ryzen two nights ago, three nights ago, I texted him, I said, look, you know what, uh, you know, this is the one, make us proud and, you know, show him how Bellator fights in Japan. And, you know, we just had a nice chat back and forth. It's very friendly. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that uh, we probably will go out of our way to try to, you know, uh, do everything that's right for Horiguchi. And, you know, he's, he's uh, one of our fighters that, uh, that it had been very, very fun to work with. So to me, I, I, I feel bad when he, uh, when he lost and he, he's always apologizing to me. I said, you're the only fighter that apologizes to, to the promoter. So please no, don't, don't have to apologize anymore. You know, this is a tough business, but I, I personally really, really like his energy and uh, I'm proud that he's on our roster. Um, I, I just like to say that, um, you know, in my years of promotion uh, in kickboxing, in K1, in MMA, that uh, Japan's always been a very, very, very special place to me. And uh, from the very first time I went there to watch K1, uh, it made me really realize, you know, uh, how big a promotion could be. And really it was uh, the groundwork for, for my future business. I learned so much working for K1 and uh, I will always do my best to support Japanese MMA and kickboxing. Uh, and, uh, you know, I appreciate them to support us back uh, with Bellator. We will be bringing more Japanese fighters to, to, to Bellator in the future. We uh, have a great relationship with uh, Horiguchi, uh, but now with uh, the relationship with uh, Tiki and Pancras and, you know, a lot of different opportunities I think we're going to open up. So uh, we're, you know, we're a company that's owned by a media conglomerate, has businesses all over the world, uh, and we'd love to come to Japan uh, and work with, uh, you know, Ryzen, but also come and do our own events as well in the future. So that's uh, our commitment to uh, global expansion as well as the Japanese market. Um, as far as Horiguchi, I would say, hey, congratulations on a, a great victory. Uh, it's a job well done. This kid that he fought is is not an easy fighter because he has a, such a heavy punch. And I knew that if he hit Horiguchi, he might hurt him. But this time Horiguchi got up, continued the fight. Then I think he his experience kicked in and how good of a fighter he is kicked in. So I would say uh, congratulations and uh, train hard and uh, we'll get you back into the cage as soon as possible. Awesome. <laughs>